I was an H. It's painful mentally because you genuinely cannot do anything for yourself. I'm not doing okay today. I was also denied. Am I gonna get demonetized for this? This surgery really, really did change my life. And like, I'm in here alone, but I'm officially at my pre-op. It's getting everything kind of sorted out for aftercare. So I won't be able to do much talking on Wednesday. I'm nervous. Just asking questions, making sure everyone's on the same page. But these little guys are getting out of here. Hey, I'm Jenica, welcome back to my channel. And today, as you read by the title, I'm going to give you all the details of my recent breast reduction surgery. Now, before we get started, I do wanna apologize that this is pretty much the exact same setup as the last video, and it's another sit down video. Annika will finally be home after two months next week, and I just wanted to go ahead and kind of knock out these solo videos that have been really requested before she gets back. Of course, there will be a lot of back to school content for her, and just the vlogs you love from both of us. Just jumping right in because we have a lot, a lot, a lot to cover. It is currently four months to the date of my breast reduction surgery. I still have two months to go in the like recovery process. It is a full like six months recovery. What is the deal? I'm definitely at a point where I can talk about this. Other than my skin, this was the other most requested video because it's just such a insane process. So jumping right in, I popped questions over on my Instagram and I'm just gonna go through them because you guys ask such good questions every single time. Okay, first question. I wrote them down because there were so many of the same ones and I didn't wanna be sitting here scrolling on my phone for forever. So first question was, was it covered by insurance and what steps did you have to take, if so, to get coverage? Mine was covered by insurance. Now, with that said, I was also denied by my insurance twice. This is a surgery I have wanted since I was in high school. I mean, I was a junior and senior in high school and I could already tell that my breasts were too big. At that time, I was really, really active and I was having to wear like multiple sports bras. Um, I know if you're watching this, you probably have a clue, but I would have to wear kind of like a normal padded, good supportive sports bra and then I'd have to wear a spandex sports bra over it to just really keep everything in place. And I was a cheerleader, I was tumbling, I was bouncing all around and it was just, very very difficult for me when I would put on a cheer uniform I would kind of joke that I had a uniboob because it just became one just big giant breast the first time I ever applied I was still on my mom's insurance and they had just changed the standard it used to be a height weight ratio and the new standard was there was a certain amount of cc's that had to be taken out of each breast and the doctors really didn't know if I was gonna meet that until they got in so it just kind of wasn't willing I wasn't willing to take the risk at that time again I think I was like 20 so I just had a lot of stuff going on and I was like you know what it'll be be fine. And then a few years later, I got my own insurance. So I was like 26. I went again. I was also denied. And I was just so, so bummed because I genuinely felt like I was going to be in that job for a really long time. I was going to have that insurance for a really long time. I kind of started looking into the options of if you get denied by your insurance, what the next steps would be. And I will cover those. Finally, the company I was with actually randomly changed insurance companies. I had one final try. I tried and I was approved first time. Now, some of the things that make it a medically necessary procedure procedure. I have kind of like permanent, I don't know if you can still see, I have permanent indentions kind of in my shoulder from bras holding my breast up for so many years. So the doctor immediately looked at that first. Second, we talked about back pain. Now my pain was sitting on the very base of my neck and just where kind of my shoulders met. It was just kind of like an oval shape of pain all of the time. Whether I was sitting straight up, it was, they were feeling like they would pull. If I kind of ever just slouched to relax, that pulled even more. And so I had so much built up pain right in my shoulders. Third, they they lifted up my whole breast and kind of took a look underneath, pulled kind of right here, and I had met all of the qualifications in office. Sometimes they require a chiropractor visit first, so some insurances will come back and be like, yes, this person does look like they may qualify. Let's, you know, send them to a chiropractor to see if that helps with any of the neck pain. With mine being beyond neck pain, I was approved immediately. So there are definitely, definitely options to take if you are denied by insurance. There are steps that you can do to kind of tweak that and work with your doctor to see what, if you can do everything that you can. My life just looking so, so different back then. I just, for some reason, 
kept putting it off. But at the end of the day, my insurance did cover it. I did end up having to pay um, my deductible and some fees. I think I paid around $1,600 for the entire thing. But I think without insurance, it usually averages about $8,000. And that can, of course, depend on where you're located. Okay, next, did you get smaller implants put in or just naturally smaller? I did not get any implants put in. And also, I'm wearing a pretty um, low coverage <laughs> top because, again, like I felt like with the skin, I'm not going to be talking about something and then just have a, a turtleneck on. So I did not get implants put in. I did not want implants. I just wanted, I knew I had enough stuff in there to recreate another uh, fairly large breast. So I didn't go with implants. I just did a naturally smaller procedure. How much was removed? This is a great question. I had, this breast was fairly larger than this one. It always has been. Um, but I got 700 cc's taken out of this breast and 650 cc's taken out of this one. And just to give you a little um, comparison, usually when people get boob jobs, like they get breast, it's usually around 200 cc's. So quite a lot taken out. Do you have to be a certain age? This is a great question. I know a couple girls that had these done in high school. It was our senior year, so I don't know if they like had to be 18 or not. I can't imagine you would be if it's a procedure that's deemed medically necessary. But as far as I know, there's not an age. I would definitely wait until you're done developing. So maybe 18 is a good year to kind of look into it. I mean, if anything, uh, if I have any regrets, it's not getting it sooner. But honestly, the way it timed out, it was the perfect timing for me. And it was when I was supposed to have it done. How tough was recovery? I'm not doing okay today. It's been like, I don't even know what today is. Friday. So it's been eight days post-op and it's the first full day that Annika's gone. She's gone to her dad's for Easter weekend. So even though she's only gonna be gone like two days, like I didn't realize how much that she was doing for me until she's not here. Um, I'm trying to change my dressings and my God's pads. And I knew that the pain underneath my arms, like underneath my underarms was like, very severe. But I didn't realize like, how swollen it was until I just like, look, cause I've not been looking at myself. Like Annika has been looking at me. So I'm just seeing myself for the first time and seeing how it just like hurts so bad over there. I don't even know if I'm making sense. I stopped taking my pain medicine on Wednesday because I didn't want to take it for longer than a week. Just because it's freaking pain medicine. Like, here we are. I'm going to show the good. I'm going to show the bad. So here we are. Eight days out. Still feeling like shit. Obviously that clip was pretty hard for me to watch now. I mean, it definitely helps that I am so happy with the procedure, but those clips are hard to watch. And I took those clips. I remember kind of making it to my bathroom and like being out of breath and being like, I need to remember how much pain I have in this moment because I don't want to get to a place where I'm just so happy with it that I forget how much pain I was in because truthfully, it is one of the most painful things I've ever, ever. Can you hear Luna snoring? Hey, Luna. I remember thinking I'm about to beat this bitch up. Truthfully, it was one of the most painful things I've ever done, and I've had two full knee surgeries and birthed a child. It's just very, not only is it very, very, very painful, it's painful mentally because you genuinely cannot do anything for yourself. Like, I, I couldn't fix myself a glass of water for a while. Like, it was a really, really painstaking process. I'm not a person that works well with, like, painkillers. I, they make me super, super nauseous, and I have a reaction to them every single time. So, I usually end up having to just take Tylenol. The, the pain was simply unbearable. I mean, I remember kind of a couple days after that initial, like, anesthesia war off and I feel the just gaping woo in my breast and it was horrific. It was absolutely horrific and you cannot lift your arms up like any more than this. So it's it's painfully physically, it's painfully mentally, it's painfully emotionally. I mean it is just it's painful. But now that I'm sitting on the other side of this, as you know I'm only four months out and I just could not be happier. I mean I really genuinely am like beaming with joy and gratitude. Like I, I'm so thankful that I did it and I did go on my best friend's bachelorette trip. You guys can go back and watch 
that. I did get on, go on the trip. I thought I wasn't going to be able to go on the boat because it was like right at six weeks out. Six weeks is when you really, you, you can't do anything for those first six weeks. And I was right at six weeks. I had talked to my doctor. I was like, you know, we're going to kind of be on a boat. And he was like, no, it might be nice that they're kind of, you know, chartered. He was like, definitely wear something supportive, but you know, you should be fine. And other than that, I just kind of took it easy like I would be doing at home. What size were you before and after? I would like to say that bra sizing is an absolute scam. If you get to a point where you are a D and then you get bigger than a D, everywhere calls it a double D and they go, you know what? They got a double D. Let's, let's call it a day. And that's just simply not the case. I was an H. Yes, they do keep going after double D. I was an H, a full H. Very, very large. Right now, I'm kind of sitting in between a D and double D. I think once I kind of all settle, I'll, I'll be a full D, which is exactly what I wanted. So I'm very, very happy. And I wanted to be kind of still full in this size because I am so curvy and I have hips and booty and everything else. So it's like, wouldn't make sense for my body type to be small adjusted but ultimately I kind of let my doctor have free range did you have a lift and how are your scars great questions thank you so much honey for sponsoring this video hi I just wanted to interrupt this incredible video to tell you about today's sponsor which is honey now if you don't know what honey is I'm about to fill you in on one of my favorite things in the entire universe I have been using honey I mean for years now literally years I've worked with them before but I also just talk about it all the time because it is truly one of my favorite 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 brands like of all time <laughs> Honey is the number one shopping tool in America. Think of it as your little shopping sidekick. You can download Honey as a little browser extension and once you're ready to check out, honestly at most places, you just click that little Honey icon. Not only does it search all promo codes for you, it tries the promo codes for you. So instead of just like copy and pasting 600 promo codes you find, it just automatically does it and it says, hey, here's the best one we found. You saved $16 or whatever the case may be. If you guys remember a few months back when I got our new couch, I actually found our couch in store, but I went online and there was a Honey coupon available. I said, I saved over $100 on my new couch using Honey. I really just can't even explain how easy it is to use. After Annika and I traveled to the beach a few months back, our suitcases had just had their last straw. We only had one each and they were from years and years and years ago. And now with us being in a better place for us to be able to travel, I wanted to make sure that when I did get us suitcases, it was like lifetime. This is probably gonna be the only suitcases we ever have to buy again. I knew it was going to be an investment purchase for both of us. So as you can see behind me, I decided to go with Bays. Bays is shameless. Mitchell's brand. I love it. I love the colors. I got the gray and as you saw in our airport vlog and I got that beautiful beautiful beige color. I got our girl Alexandra to make us some decals. Each got a large check bag, a carry-on suitcase, and then a personal item kind of bag. Kind of the three essentials for travel. And you guys... I saved over a hundred dollars again on both of these purchases each because I purchased them separately with it being a bigger purchase I needed to separate them so I got Annika's got that coupon code saved that insane amount and then I was just fingers crossed that honey would pull through for me again when I was purchasing mine and they did you guys it was so so easy and it works on over 30,000 websites like Nike Amazon all kinds of things it's literally a free browser extension and just free money you can add it right now to your browser for free by going to joinhoney.com com slash Jenica and Annika. That is joinhoney.com slash Jenica and Annika. And as always, I'll have all the links in the description below. Thank you so much again, honey, for sponsoring this video. I love you guys so much. Thank you for saving me money. So breast reductions, some doctors call glorified breast lifts. Um, at the end of the day, no matter how much they take out, they're going to have to lift. And so I don't feel like my boobs were, were saggy before, but I mean, gravity can only go out so much before it starts dropping, you know what I mean? And like now it's so funny because I'll wear kind of like little tank tops and things and I'll look down and my nipple will fully be out because I'm not used to my nipples like kind of being so high up. Am I allowed to say nipples on YouTube? I probably should stop repeating it if I'm not. Anyway, so I did have some sort of a lift for sure and as far as my scarring I think my scars are placed in a very very nice position so with the breast reduction it my scars kind of start I wonder if I can show sorry if this is oops, sorry my scars are let's see oh am I gonna get demonetized for this is this too much are we crossing a line in here here's my scars they go I don't know if you can tell exactly how far they go up but they go big pr pretty far but they kind of look like this right now again this is only four months and you can tell that they're already red they're not purple anymore they were purple. 
and thick and just juicy scar. Now, my doctor did suggest a silicone-based scar cream or scar gel, and so I use Scar Away. It's, it's silicone-based, and it has been really good. It's really, really sticky and tacky, but I keep it on all the time, and I feel like that's what's kind of fed my process up from going to that purple shade to this now lovely red. But actually, when I was just at Shannon's giving her her pot pie, her mom has had a surgery, and she kind of showed me over here, and you, I mean, I had to, like, literally, like, squint in order what was that face in order to be able to even see her scars so that really gave me a lot of hope that I've honestly I've never even been really worried about the scars I don't care that much and, and like I said they just go under my boob and all like it all the way you can probably see in here too but um yeah see they're already not that bad, but I mean, you you can't ever, ever see them. So the scarring, in my opinion, is one of the things I'm not too pressed about. Um, I, I have high hopes that they're gonna heal pretty nicely. And for the time being, I would rather take these scars than the big old honkers that I had, so. This is a nice little backhanded question. Did AJ take care of you the whole time? It seems like a lot of pressure to put on her. She did not take care of me the whole time. I definitely had other people. I had friends over, I had my mom come. My friend Maddie that you guys have definitely met, uh, her mom actually had the procedure too. Shannon's mom had the procedure too so they knew how much help that I needed and Maddie came and spent a whole day helping me organize and get things done. Now, Annika did help a lot though and I will say that I don't think that this is something that you can do without someone quite literally living with you for the first two weeks. Two weeks for sure. We did argue a couple times and I tried to tell her like, I know this is not normal. You're not going to have to take care of me forever. I just am going to need your help for a little bit and she was very good at helping out but of course there were things where Sometimes I was in so much pain I couldn't communicate what I needed and, and it would cause kind of some frustration. Anytime we got to that point, we just separated. That's what we do. When we kind of start button heads, we just separate for a minute and we always come back totally fine with a clear head. The most difficult thing was showering, which was very, very difficult, truly. But she did have to like wash my hair for me once and then finally I was like, nope, I'm just getting blowouts for the rest of the time. So she washed my hair once and then I got two blowouts and then after that I could wash my own hair. But she really did also help change my dressings once you come out of surgery you have a surgical bra that you're in and I'll, I'll insert some pictures and you have to kind of put the gauze and things down there so you really have to take care of I couldn't see what was going on down there for the first little bit I couldn't maneuver my like I couldn't even do this right here so Annika did help change a lot we did the best that we could but I definitely feel like you you do need someone that is able to take care of you for a little bit and she did great and she was compensated <laughs> let's just say that when did you really know you wanted to do it? As I mentioned, I have wanted this since my senior year of high school, but I think the kind of, no pun intended, straw that broke the camel's back was working from home with, with the pandemic. I didn't realize, I mean, my schedule pre-pandemic was getting up every morning, leaving my house at 7 a.m., taking Annika to school, commuting an hour to work, working all day, sitting at a desk, and driving back home. I thought that I was sitting down a pretty decent amount of my day, but I was getting up and going to meetings, getting up and going get lunch, getting up and walking around downtown, like doing a bunch of things that I wasn't really factoring in. When we started working from home, the, the biggest steps I was taking was from my living room to my kitchen. You know, I, I, I didn't have as many stand-up hours in the day. I started a, a few months into the pandemic, if even that, I started having to go from my desk to my makeup desk to work, to my couch to work, to Annika's desk to work. I had to just constantly be readjusting myself because my back was just in constant pain. It was sitting at that desk all day long was just killing my back. And I remember one day I called my mom crying and I I was like, I cannot do these boobs anymore. I, it's hindering me from like living life and I have to get rid of these. Obviously it was a combination of my chronic illness and my breast it was really hindering my like exercise abilities, but I just, I couldn't even work out because it was just every, there was just boob everywhere. There was boob here, there was boob here, there was boob down here, there was, there was just boob everywhere. And so I think during the pandemic, I just, I had enough and I was like, I have got to get this taken care of. Did you have drinks? This is a great question. So when you come out of surgery, you do have most people, I mean, I think like a 90% probably kind of tubes that are still in your boobie and then a little drain pouch that's connected to that bra that you leave surgery in. I did not drain that much and I was just so out of it and in pain those first, it was two days that I had drains. I, I didn't even care about them. My mom and Annika kind of kept up with the numbers and emptying them and everything. And so maybe I'll do a video with Annika and her perspective of 
the surgery, but the drains did not bother me. They came out in two days and it was totally fine. That was like the least of my worries, honestly. Please touch on numbness, shooting pain, and lost feeling. Great, great questions. My left side over here, my nipple, am I allowed to say that word? Don't know. Those are still numb. Feeling has come back totally over here. I mean, I still have a little bit of like, is this numb or like what's going on here? I've gotten full feeling back in this whole breast and she's thriving. When your kind of nerves are reconnecting, you have these like bouts of like shooting pain. So I would like be bopping around, you know, doing dishes or whatever, have a shooting pain go straight through my nipples. I honestly kind of felt like Wonder Woman. But the thing about the, the shooting like nerve pain, it does not last long. It's weird and it's uncomfortable, but I don't think it's, it's more uncomfortable and kind of shocking than it is painful. So I've been able to deal with that. Now I'm still getting that come through. Of, I, I feel like I'm going to get feeling back over here. Um, I don't know that I'll ever get my feeling back over here because it just feels real weird. And I've had two knee surgeries, like I mentioned, and I never got feeling back in my knee. So I'm kind of thinking right here is going to be the same. But as far as my nips, we're good. I love this question. Did it improve your confidence? And I think that we can all agree with just seeing me these days. I know that there's been a lot of life changes happening and I feel like it's all been really, really quick. But I think that, oh my God. I think, oh, I I did not expect to cry in this video. I think that this surgery really, really did change my life. And like, oh my God, hold on. This surgery really did change my life in such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful way. And I I feel like it's the craziest thing, but I feel like my boobs now are the size that I thought that they were. You know, I think that a lot of people do have different variations of a body dysmorphia. Mine was more, I always, because I'd always been so small and I had just this huge weight gain and that did affect my boobs some but like they've always been huge and I just wasn't convinced that I was as big as I was so I always saw myself as smaller and you think oh that sounds great because I I see myself bigger it, it, it they're both not great situations to be in because I struggled so bad with buying clothes that were too small or buying bras that were too small or just genuinely not being able to live in my body like I should because I didn't know what size I was I feel like now these boobs are the size that I always thought that I, I I always looked down and this is what I thought that my breast looked like when in reality they were just not like this at all and I mean if you scroll back through my Instagram you see that I rarely showed I mean I would I would wear stuff that was veed like here and there would be cleavage but I rarely 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 showed any sort of cleavage and I always wanted to feel empowered and wear cute little fun little frilly top and I felt like my fashion was so limited with having larger chest. I felt like my exercise was limited having larger chest and I just felt overall I was limited with having larger chest and this has just boosted my confidence in a way that I could have never ever thought would be possible. Next question. Do you still have nipples? Yes, I do still have nipples. My boobs look exactly like a normal set of boobs. Sometimes I literally will be looking at the mirror just like naked and I'm like these things are gorgeous. And I'm like, oh, they were quite literally man-made. Okay, next question. Did you have a size preference or was it doctor recommended? Do you regret your size? This is such a good question. This is such a good question. So obviously, like I mentioned, I did kind of have a size preference. I just kind of still wanted it to look normal with my body. But at the end of the day, a doctor that's performing a breast reduction is a plastic surgeon. They are not going to have you walking around as a free advertisement looking not great. I knew that going in because I had already been to two consultations and kind of had the lay of the land and I, I told my doctor that I said look I want you to look at me this is my body type you know even if I lose weight I still am a curvy girl I'm always curvy I still want to be curvy so just do whatever you think will be I said but I did tell him the one thing that I did in my 10 years of research on this surgery only two regrets that I kept hearing from people that had this done is one that they didn't do it sooner and two that they didn't go even smaller so I said don't be worried that I'm gonna think they're too small like I trust you I had a great doctor I trust you and just make them as small as you can without kind of compromising my curviness you know and he did a wonderful wonderful job I think that it's I think it was such a great surgery I mean if anything I, I think I could
could have been smaller. I would have been totally fine with being a little bit smaller, but I love the size they are. So I'm very, very happy with the size. And also I went to Dr. Indara from Columbia Plastic Surgery in Columbia, Tennessee. Okay, next question. Could you do this with a quote, real job? Well, I think at this point we all know that YouTube is a real job. I ha I was working for, like I was working my corporate job when I had this done. I was fully an employee for my corporate job, 40 hours a week, full-time employee with benefits when I got the surgery done through my company is who I had the insurance through and everything. Now I just chatted with HR, seeing the best way to kind of go about this. I work for a really incredible company. Maybe some other companies don't have the same policies. Mine, I was just able to take short-term disability. So anything like pregnancy, childbirth related, surgery related, um, those are what you use short-term disability for. Um, and it's anything from two weeks to six weeks. So with me already knowing that I was going to need that full six weeks time, I knew that it would be kind of a short-term disability route. I talked to HR, as I mentioned, and they pointed me in the direction of how to apply for that. It was a very easy process and I was able to be paid for the full six weeks. I mean, definitely it would depend on your company policies, but it was a fairly easy thing for me to do with a full-time corporate job. This question, how does the actual surgery work? Okay, this is gonna, this, this I need to get situated for because when I do anything in life, I mean, when I buy a vlog camera, when I get lighting, when I want a nightstand, when I do anything in life, I'm a person that I research for so long. Like I research all the different products. I kind of narrow it down to two ones that I love, do pros and cons. I watch hundreds of YouTube videos, research every single thing that I do. Now, I have researched and watched so many videos and testimonials about breast reduction surgery for the last 10 years. Been educating myself on this procedure. Everything was first kind of how to get insurance to approve it and how to even get it done and what to do and those kind of questions. And then once it's kind of got time, it was the after one. So scarrings and pain levels and, and those type of questions. I never stopped and thought, hey, those, those moments that you're asleep, what's going on then? And you guys, Wow, it, it gets pretty graphic. Obviously, I'm not gonna like show anything, but it, it's pretty intense that you take a full beating when you're in there. Let me tell you, it is so, so invasive and just like a surgery. I had to actually be at the hospital at 5 a.m. to get checked in and everything. I was one of the first surgeries of the morning. Mom and I got up at 4.30. We what? headed to Columbia and got checked in. Here we go. Ready or not, here we go. Fit check. These are bright yellow. I'm part of the 2021 collection for the hospital. And then this gorgeous green. The sage green is really in this season. Here we go. Mm -hmm. I just got out. Um, pain keeps coming and going, but my throat was so dry. I'm ready to have some water and some soup and uh, see Annika. Do I look smaller already? Yes, you do. You just bandaged up, but you definitely look smaller a lot. I talked to the kind of anesthesia team. I talked to my doctor and my nurses and went under, came out of that. I don't really remember the ride home. I was fine, but I woke up the next day and I was like, what the did they do to me? And so on my two day post-op, I looked at my doctor and I was like, I know this is probably um, a little late to be asking this, but I'm just curious. What does the procedure look like, like when I'm under? This is what happens, okay? So you're laying on that operating table. It, truly skip this if you're kind of squeamish because it's, it's a lot. They cut from over here all the way under, all the way under this one, all the way over here, okay? They lift up, mm -hmm. yep, they lift, they lift your skin up and they start scraping that muscle, tissue, everything that has been growing on my literal bones for years, they start scraping it off. Does muscle grow directly on bones? I literally, I have no idea. My mom's gonna be mad at me for not knowing that, but I don't know anything about medical stuff. So they're scraping, scraping, scraping. Did have some liposuction actually over here um, because I had so much boob on my side and I think that's why like I've been in so much pain on the sides because they did have to go in and kind of literally suction tissue off of me. But then they, they, I'm sorry, it's awful, it's awful. Then they cut your nipple out and they kind of sit it on a table over there. I don't know if they really do that, but they cut your nipple off and they say, just one moment. Then they pull everything 
sitting back down over your new titty, okay? And sew it. Now, I just want to show you guys. I have two, I have two little freckles that I've had since I was like four years old. I've literally had these all my whole life. They used to be in my collarbone. Mm -hmm. They used to be here. I came out of surgery and I was like, I mean, because my bra was like covering here. I was like, where are my freckles? My freckles are gone. And um, they're down here now. So that's how much they pull your skin down. I mean, a lot of this, all of this skin was like up here. Okay, so they pull it down. Then they do what's it called? A lollipop scar. I have the lollipop scarring for my... And essentially what that is, is they kind of go to the middle of your boob, your new boob, cut a straight line in a circle, make your nipple a perfect circle, and plop it back in there. And then sew that up. So the scarring I have goes under, under, and then lollipop. So that is what the actual procedure looks like. I don't know if that's going to make you not want to get it. Please, please don't let that steer you away because you're asleep for all of that. But it is a pretty brutal surgery. It's pretty, pretty brutal. I mean, I, I literally, like I said, I've had all kinds of things done to me over the years, hospital-wise and this was the most like invasive like like hard invasive surgery okay and last question I'm gonna answer for now please 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 let me know if you want me to do a part two I could even do a, I could even do a part two with Annika kind of on her perspective of the surgery and if you ha have any more additional questions just leave them below I'll, you guys know I chat in the comments all all the time but this last question said if you could go back would you do it again and then the answer 100 times over is absolutely yes absolutely yes I would do this I would do this surgery through the pain through the frustration through through the swelling, through the just incredible emotional toll, I would do the surgery 100 times over and uh, I, I just couldn't be more happy with my results. So if you've had a breast reduction and you see some comments, let's help each other out below. And again, if you have any other questions for me, I'll be happy to do a part two or just chat with you guys in the comments. I hope this was helpful. I hope that this either swayed you yes or no. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully yes, because it genuinely has been one of the best things I've ever done for myself. I am like breast Reductions, number one fan and yeah Annika comes home next week so surely I think we're only gonna have like one more solo vlog and then we should be back with with our girl AJ and please continue to stay safe and I love you guys so 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 much and I will see you in the next vlog